So Patrick Ahern uh, both, holds both the SIOR and CCIM designations, and he's going to be talking to us about the Office of Medical Market today. Patrick is the Vice President of Office Services for NAI Martins. He's been active in the commercial real estate industry for more than 31 years. Prior to joining NAI Martins, he, he worked with uh, Coke Industries in their commercial real estate department. And then he also worked as Director of Leasing for European American Realty in Chicago and as a leasing agent for Collins Tuttle & Company in Chicago. And unlike Charlie, I did not coach Patrick in <laughs> elementary school soccer. Please welcome Patrick Ayer. Thank you, Stan. I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm actually not going to talk that much about medical, but I am going to talk about national trends in office space and, and uh, how it filters down to Wichita. And what we've seen is a lot of um, B and C class buildings that have uh, gone into what I would call the death spiral, where they have, um, you know, the uh, the elevators are gone, the systems are gone, the, the uh, owner, because everything is so bad, the owner keeps dropping the rent and, and there's no money put away for, uh, for uh, refurbishment of the, uh, of the infrastructure of the building. And then they, they get closed down. Generally, what will happen is um, KG&E shows up and uh, they'll slap a, uh, a notice on the front door and then, then it becomes a rat ship. <laughs> so, uh, a good example of this is, but, uh, an alternate use is obviously the building, let me go back a slide. So um, this summer, Grant Glasgow and I have been uh, selling the, uh, or trying to sell the Market Center building. And when we got the listing, I thought, well, you know, this is going to be a pain in the ass, it's going to be hot this summer, I don't deserve air conditioning, you know, it's going to be... But we, we literally had people coming out of the woodworks. And, and there wasn't a day that went by where we didn't get a call from somebody who was a historic redeveloper or a low, uh, uh, low income, I forget what they call uh, Lycra? Not the stuff you use in your underwear, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, Jeff. Um, and, uh, but there was, there was a tremendous amount of interest. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And then, and then up at the top, you can see the uh, Colorado Derby building, which had been an office building and converted. And then, of course, Occidental Plaza, which was in the process of being converted, but had a, a setback this summer. <laughs> so um, the uh, Hilton Garden Inn is an interesting story. Uh, this sold at auction for 11 bucks a foot five or six years ago. And uh, yeah, it did OK. <laughs> Um, and, and the great thing about it, and I, I went in there a week ago, was the Starbucks right there. Has, that, have, has anyone been in there? Have you been in there? Raise your hand. It's a legitimate Starbucks. It's not like some crappy deal with the lady with the pumper and the thing. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's for real. And, you know, you think, well, it's just a coffee shop. It's not. It's more than that. It's, it, you know, it's Starbucks, and it's a place where people can go, and they get free Wi-Fi, and they get... They get amped up, and it's not bad. Oh, so, uh, Moe and Portanto, 150 North Main. So, uh, last year, I was involved in the sale of 150 North Main, and this building had a lot of problems. And, uh, and the, biggest, the biggest problem was the urban campers. So, uh, what, what happened was, we had, uh, we had homeless people that broke into it. And they, in one weekend, 4th of July weekend, they set it on fire twice. And the, the fire department came, and they had to have it boarded up. And for you younger people, this is, it's not the kind of curb appeal you want. But so, so the city came along, and they said, listen, unless you secure this building, we're going we're gonna to start fining you. And so the owner, we, we hired a group to come out and board it up. So we boarded it up. And then they boarded it up. They, they got done at midnight. It came back at eight o'clock in the morning, and they had already they had already cut through. And I knew I was up against a a committed foe. And so uh, 
what they had to do is they had to put in these steel plates. And so, uh, to, and that slowed them down, but it didn't stop them. So what happened next was I kept, let me go back a slide. So what happened next was I got a call from this woman that worked, or she lived at the lots. And she said to me, she said, you don't know me, but uh, the, uh, these homeless people keep getting into the building. And I said, yeah, I know, and we can't figure out how they're getting into the building. And she said, what they're doing is they're climbing on the light poles on Main Street, they jump over on the awning, and then they kick in the windows on the second floor. I said, really? I said, thank you. So, um, so one, one, uh, <laughs> So one Saturday, I was a little bored, and I don't, I don't play golf, and I like projects. So what I did was, I went to Williams Ace Hardware, and I bought some axle grease. This is the axle grease, I also got a key, but, uh, but this is, well, these are uh, latex gloves that I bought. So I went down there and I put grease on the light bulbs. And it, and it slowed the people down. And I'll have you know, this is not this is not in my general listing agreement. You know, putting up a sign, I do that, I put it on loop at the whole thing. This is not part of that. So let's talk about let's talk about the class B um, office market in downtown. And we'll we'll get to we'll get to the rest of it. But so I want you to, the, I highlighted this number for a purpose. And um, this is very, very, very interesting. So I, I was, I had a tenant about a year ago and they said, I want to, I'm an $11, $12 tenant. I want to look at space, class B office space in downtown. And I put together a survey and we went around and, and they're, and I, none of the options that were available were terribly exciting. And I called Larry at the Garvey Center. He said, I'm full, I can't help you. And he was, he was one of my go-tos at 5% at, uh, at commission. <laughs> so uh, there's, there's Larry. He had, a, he had a bicycle accident a few months ago, and he was knocked unconscious and broke his clavicle and broke something else. But he, he's recovering nicely. And then I had, I had a showing a week before his accident. And he called me from the hospital to follow up. And, uh, you know, he, he had been knocked unconscious for like an hour. And, uh, but he's trying to make a buck, and you gotta, <laughs> you gotta think about it like that. <laughs> and there's still, I did this presentation two years ago, and they're still pretty close to 100%, which is, which is great. So this is, next slide is what I call Suna Subtraction. So Suna Tokola uh, acquired a whole bunch of buildings. So if we go back to that slide, she's acquired more than, so she acquired the, uh, the Finney State Office building. She acquired Sutton Place. She acquired uh, Broadway Plaza, which she's going to turn into a hotel. Sutton Place, I think, is going to be a dormitory. She also acquired the Henry's building, which is going to be the uh, it's going to be a, a food service, and then she acquired uh, the building that used to be accident recovery team. And this takes a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, buildings that were competing uh, against each other off the market. Some of these buildings had already gone into the death spiral. So, so the uh, you know the second place they had they had uh, what I would call urban campers living in the building. Uh, Broadway Plaza, the elevators didn't work. I had a client that was in there and, and the elevators didn't work. The guy was losing weight because he had to go up and down the stairs seven times, but, but it was less than ideal. But she's acquired a lot of the, these buildings and, and, I, and I think and I hope she'll be successful with her venture. But the other great thing that she did is she, um, two of these buildings, Sutton Place and Broadway Plaza had been, had been condoed out by the Minnesota guys. And which was a horrible idea because there was no reserve uh, to to put capital back in the building for the infrastructure of the building. And the, and the building, like I said, in the, with these other buildings, hit the death spiral. So uh, let's let's move on. So, okay, so uh, in Class A, there's a lot of large block spaces. 
that are available. In a, a lot of them are in the uh, Epic Center and also the Ruffin, uh, Ruffin building. I, I like this picture. This, I got this from Loopnet. Look at this guy right here on his bicycle. <laughs> nobody could have nobody could have cropped him out. <laughs> um, I, I wonder if he got paid. Maybe he's looking for a gig at Circus Circus. Um, so uh, uh, Martin Frangle just moved out on the fifth floor of this building. Uh, Hinkle and Corn moved out. Viega moved out, and uh, so there's some big blocks. The thing that's kind of that's kind of tricky is a lot of this space was built in the uh, 1990s and it was built under an old model where you had a lot of offices on the perimeter and then you had either workstations or cubicles in the middle and that that's really not what people are looking for anymore and so I think what, what they're going to find or what we're going to find is the tenants that take over these spaces are going to have to get a lot of money put into building them out, something on the order of like at least 40 bucks a foot. So it's going to have to be a long-term lease with a pretty solid credit tenant. Um, now, another thing that's happening is with an office is what's called densification of office space using an open office model. And what tenants have been able to do, not only in, in Wichita, Hinkle did this, and, and a, a Grant Thornton did this, and a, and a few other tenants, is um, they, uh, they uh, get, uh, they go to either a one size or two size fits office. So, so you would, you know, if you're a partner, you, may, you might have the same size office as, a, as an associate. And with this, with this office concept, uh, so what happens is you show up at your office in the morning and you do not, you do not have an, uh, until you get there, you don't have an assigned desk. You don't have, you know, you don't have a, a Jayhawk on your desk or a picture of your wife or kids. It's, it's totally unassigned, even if you're, a, you know, a big hitter at a law firm like Brad Stout over here. Um, you just show up and then, and then when you get there, you're assigned either a, an open office, which you see here, or if you're if you're higher up on the food chain, you might get an office. But in, in the course of a week, you might you might be sitting in a different place every day. You, usually, you're sitting in a different place every day, and then you would get a, just one filing cabinet to keep all your stuff in. And some of the people get so um, efficient that they don't put anything. They just have the filing cabinet; they don't even use it. So that it's a lot of people are going completely paperless. The other, um, and then also notice the um, these open workstations are along the window. And and when I said that the older space would have to be redone, what what they're doing is they're doing an open space along the window. And there's this concept called right to light. So if you're a younger person, it used to be that when I got out of college 32 years ago. They would just shove you next to the, you know, the freight elevator, and you know, and some, you know, some godforsaken place. But kids today are, are di a little different, and they they have this concept of right to light. Also, they find that people work better when they're exposed to natural light. And then this is another example of the open office concept. So, if you were in an open space and you had something where you needed to make a, a private phone call to a client, or you wanted to, if you really needed to concentrate, and uh, like, you know, like Merck Buckley on a lease or something, you would, you would go into one of these offices, and, and you would have privacy, you'd have, uh, you'd, have you'd be able to concentrate. <laughs> so the other, the other part of it is, uh, and this is sort of millennial friendly, is, is the experience. So it, it used to be an office, which is some place you went to do your work. There, there wasn't much of an experience there. You know, there, maybe there was a guy selling, you know, cigarettes and pantyhose or something. But that was the extent of it. Now, you know, now there's, uh, a, you know, nice places to sit at lunch, food service, and then if you notice over here, uh, this is at the Farm Credit Bank building. What, what they did is they, they uh, built this out and then they had this area. So if, 
if no one wants to hang out with you at lunch and you're just by yourself, you can sit here and watch Sports Center or, or the Financial Channel, and there's a plug in for your phone and your laptop, and you can you have lunch by yourself. Um, the other thing is uh, amenities like a, like a health club. This, this is also the Farm Credit Build Bank building. This, uh, the, the owner in the last couple of years has put $4 million into the building to try and make it more, they, they don't call it this, but the best term I can think of is, is millennial friendly. And, and what this goes to is, as we all know, unemployment is really low. And so it's, it's hard to get, you know, it's, it's hard to get good help anymore. So what corporate America has figured out is that it's, it's much easier to uh, retain people than it is to try and train somebody. It, it, it could take six months or, or a year to, to train somebody. And so what they're doing is they're spending a little bit more money on real estate. And, uh, um, and then the other thing is, and I've noticed this, and I know that some of the other office brokers have noticed is it used to be when you would do a tour, it was a, a real estate guy and a principal, and now they're starting to bring the human resources people. B because the human resources people want to get involved to make sure that it's, it's uh, millennial friendly. And uh, this is also the farm credit bank building. This is, the, this is the tenant lounge. There's shuffleboard here, ping pong, and then if somebody wanted to plug in and watch a ping pong game or table tennis, they could, or, or uh, you know, they could hang out. There's Wi-Fi throughout the building, so if somebody wanted to get away from their workstation and return phone calls or, or emails outside of their office, this this is a nice way to give them a break. And we've had tenants that have really reacted well to this and, and said, you know, this is the kind of environment we want. We we want to be able to attract and, and retain. And then also we have, uh, we're hearing a lot about uh, shared office space like WeWork. And what you have is um, these, these folks are get, gobbling up two and three floors of uh, office buildings all over the country. And, uh, and they have a lot of amenities. Again, it's very, uh, it's very experience oriented. This is, uh, this is WeWorks in Plano, Texas, just down the road. This looks a little funky with these pillows. You can get a hook in there. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a good time. Um, so uh, Mark Pringle relocated in downtown. I mentioned that earlier. What, what's really interesting to me is, and I've been in downtown Wichita Park for 20 years, is Tenants in the Central Business District were not interested in paying over uh, 16, 17 bucks a foot unless it was the GSA. You know, because it's not their money, they don't care. Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pay anything. But the great thing about, about this is that um, we have tenants that are willing to pay re replacement cost and um, new construction rental rates in downtown. And I've not seen that in 20 years, and that's that's pretty big. Um, bravely onward. So it's you know it's pretty easy to pay some folks to get up before dawn and take a bunch of pictures of downtown and then do an advertising campaign. But uh, at Fidelity, they they uh, they're spending a lot of money, and when you see this crane, this is not far from my office. This crane represents a lot. We've not had a crane in downtown since the high was built a long time ago. This represents jobs, um, and uh, this is gonna be a, a $51 million development. And it's saying a lot, and so I took this quote right from the press release. And again, they're talking about um, attracting and retaining the kind of talent that they want. And it's, this is a, when you see this, when I see this, you know, when I'm coming to, uh, west on Douglas, going through College Hill, and you start to see that crane, uh, it makes me feel pretty good because it's a, it's a huge step forward for Wichita. And uh, 
I, I'm going to the petroleum club and there's a bunch of old guys and they would sit around and, and one of them said to me one day, he said, uh, he said, hey, Aaron, do you know how you can make a small fortune in downtown Wichita? And I said, I said, no. And he said, start with a large fortune. <laughs> And then the other, the other joke was, and this was probably 10 years ago, was that, uh, you know, the last one to leave downtown turned the lights out. And because uh, and at the time, downtown was, was going in the wrong direction. This is a, a, a Delano development that's gonna, um, that hopefully is gonna start. I know, I know they got kind of slowed down, but they're gonna have a three-story office building in Delano. And um, with these developments, if if you're doing brokerage, I think it gives I think it gives brokers a great opportunity to go and talk to clients and get them excited about relocating because there, there's new opportunities. These are going to be nice developments. Uh, this is going to be a great development. We're going to talk about some of the other developments and. If, if they're concerned about uh, attracting or retaining the right kind of employees, maybe it's, maybe it's time for a move. And going back to, going back to uh, Mark Pringle, they probably almost doubled their rent and what they were paying in the, in the Ruffin building to, to move to a, a newer building. But, you know, obviously it was, it was worth it to them. Um, this, another development, Ice House, um, is, is going to come online. This was no shave in November. <laughs> I think Chad had some just for men. <laughs> but um, again, go out, and talk to, go out and talk to office tenants. There, there's a bunch of new developments you can talk to them about, and, and I think you'll be surprised. The other thing I think is going to happen is when, when uh, so I imagine that pretty soon Mark Pringle will have an open house. And then there'll be some lawyers and other people that go out and look at it and, they, and they'll come back and they'll say, you know what? Our office is a dump. It's time for us to move. And I think it's going to spur a lot of people. And, and I saw that happen when, uh, when Fulston Seif can move to Waterfront probably 15 years ago. There was a lot of movement after that because they set the bar pretty high. So we, we may we may see that. Um, a, another you know another tenant. This is this is what I would call a man bites dog story. And um, it used to be that the only flow in downtown was out, and, and you got IMA who's interested, and uh, you know they're moving to downtown. They're going to be paying. Um, new construction prices, Meritrust Credit Union. This is right across the street from the uh, uh, the building I was telling you about. This is 150. This is right across the street. They they're, they said they're going to put four million dollars. I bet they're going to put more into it. But this is uh, this is great investment downtown. And you know, you think about some of these some of these sites. There's going to be a lot more taxes paid on this site. There's going to be more taxes paid on this site. 150 North Main. Um, it's hard to get any taxes out of the urban campers. It's it's uh, you know this is a lot more revenue in uh, in tax dollars, which is which is a positive. Some uh, notable sales: the Thorn Building sold uh, this uh, this spring. It sold in April for eighty-two dollars a square foot. Um, and uh, it's, it's rumored that the, the, the new buyer from Kansas City has a tenant for all the vacancy. River Park Place sold. Wilson Estates sold. Uh, the Wilson Estates uh, Wood Spring Building and also Aetna. Kind of a funny story about this. Uh, Grant Glasgow Ish and uh, Dave Lewis and I collaborated on the sale. And it was an online auction. And what happened was there was a gentleman who had some 1031 money that he had to place. And uh, he was bidding online on his phone. 
And uh, he, he really had to place this money. And he was going through an airport. For some reason, his phone died. And uh, what, what happened was by the time he could get his phone up and running again, the auction was over. And, uh, but he was, he was dead set on buying the building. But um, these buildings had sold in 2006 to a tenant and common sponsor that sold um, a price that was above the replacement cost in the building of the buildings, which doesn't happen a lot in Wichita. And then uh, Paul, Paul bought them back, and, and so now he has complete ownership of the park. And then uh, probably the, uh, the healthiest uh, submarket we have is uh, Class A Northeast. Not a lot of vacancy, really low uh, vacancy rate. And, the, uh, and also the uh, Class B for, uh, is, is not unhealthy. Notable lease transactions. The uh, Corporate Hills building was, was entirely leased. There's a gentleman who is going to, who's leased it. He's going to convert it to medical office space and, and sublease it. And then uh, Berkshire Hathaway moved to the Hinkle building and took uh, 18,000 square feet. So, there, so there's two types of tenants. And I know I've been going on and on about how um, there's, there's tenants that, uh, you know that they're really concerned with their employees. They want to be able. To, they want to be able to attract the right kind of employees. They want. They don't want to have to retrain employees because they because they, they leave, and so they want to make these these tenants or their their employees really uh, cared for and feel like they're in a great environment. And then there's the other kind of tenant. Then there's the other kind. Of <laughs> Not so much. So uh, some of the tenants I talked to. All they care about is price. The, the building they're in is falling around. Uh, the elevator doesn't work. They're happy paying 10 bucks a foot. They don't want to pay any more. The, the uh, operating costs of the building are probably six or seven. They, they, they get a kick out of paying low rent. They really don't particularly care about their employees if they're happy, if they have to go up and down the stairs. You know, they just they don't care. And. Uh, So um, the CBD population, I've noticed a lot, and if, if you've been downtown, you'll notice people uh, pushing kids in strollers, you see people exercising, you, uh, and, and, I, and it's really starting to, uh, and you see people riding those scooters. Listen, somebody's gonna die on one of those things. <laughs> I, you know, everybody knows it, but it, it does it does cause more people to come downtown and ride those things around. I think you're taking your life in your hands, but that's up to you. Um, but again, like I like I mentioned on the uh, on the hotel, this Starbucks is a is a big deal. It's it's part of an urban experience that that millennials want, and they're and they're they're just hooked on that that caffeine. Um, and then, again, as I said, the, the employers like IMA and Meritrust, they made a decision. Fidelity made a decision. They want to be downtown. They, they think that to get the kind of employees they want, they got to be downtown in, a, in an urban place where, the, where everybody can you know, live, work, and play. You've got Old Town if you want to go out and grab a beer after work. you got the Wave. you got the Interest Bank Arena. There's stuff happening. At, uh, um, at the, um, all over, it's, it's exciting. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Ish, Tomas. And three questions we all want to know. <coughs> Where do you hide bodies? <laughs> 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 really angered me because I would be at work just minding my own business and then I'd see I, you know the thing on my phone would sit that shows me who's call, caller ID and it was to Wichita Police Department I was like oh god here goes, here goes another two hours of my day 
And then I would have to go over there and they would drag some guy who was stealing copper out of there or sleeping in there. And I had to stand there and tell the guy not to come back. And uh, it, was, it was just a pain. But uh, so, so I got fed up and, and, and got aggressive with the axillaries. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thought and it is always a challenge when you're when you're just moving people from one building to another. 